Log 3. Went through another teleporter. Got taken somewhere else. Not sure if I'm actually making any progress. Don't know if I'm underground, but half the place is flooded. Doesn't stop the creatures from attacking, though. Found something. Some kind of shipping container. Not like the other ones on the UES contact light. Not like one of the normal chests I keep finding either. What the hell is this? Looks like I could open it. Hello again, friends. My name is Varia Pendragon. We are the Whispers, and this, by popular demand, is how to play accurate in Risk of Rain Returns. As always, spoilers. While I typically make a point of only showing the first stage or two in the background to avoid spoiling future content, there's still bound to be new items and enemies that appear in footage. And of course, we're going to be talking about everything regarding this character. So if you're brand new to Risk of Rain and you want to find accurate organically, now's your chance to click off. Just remember to come back and let me know how you like them later. For those who remain, you all know how this goes from last video. Thanks for blowing up that one, by the way. Y'all are amazing. We're going to go over how you get accurate in the first place, give a brief overview of how the Plague Pup plays, and then get into the nitty gritty of main and alternate abilities. By the end, you'll have all the info you need to unlock accurate and all the alt abilities, and of course, knowing how to use them effectively. First, getting accurate is fairly simple. You'll need to make it to stage 3, which has a chance to be Sunken Tomb, the underwater catacombs. In the top right of the map, sometimes you'll find a steel box that you can interact with. Once you do, Akrut will burst from his cage, and you need to defeat it. From there, he's all yours. Ah, Plague Doggo. Best boy! And my first win here in Risk Returns. I've been a huge Akrut lover since the original Risk of Rain, and I'm pleased to announce that he's back just the way I remember him. Deadly epidemics and all. As Akrut, it's your job to be the pit bull whose owner swears it doesn't bite. And they're wrong. Not only will you bite, but you'll also vomit in the wound and projectile shit all over the floor until they die of about five kinds of cancers. Akrid is a melee character, and I put that in pretty heavy quotation marks because the number one pitfall for new Akrid players is just running in primarily using your melee attack, which is a fair mistake. It is in the primary fire position after all. And while you can succeed this way, Akrid really shines when you use his other abilities to create kill zones and then move in for the finisher on your now weakened prey in a very hit and run manner. After all, it's much easier to kill an enemy when they're already coughing up blood. Akrid's primary attack is festering wounds, and it's pretty straightforward. You have claws and teeth. Use them, rip and tear until it is done. <clears throat> Anyways, because you're a filthy, filthy mutt, your claws are covered in deadly poison and deal damage over time to the enemies you just slashed open. Unlike most survivors, you can actually turn this ability around while holding it down, instead of just strafing backwards while swinging. This can be odd, since not all melee survivors operate this way, but it's a good thing to keep in mind and utilize, because a lot of smaller enemies will wind up behind you. As if being cut open and poisoned wasn't enough, Acrid's secondary is Neurotoxin. You spit out toxic bile in a line, about the size of a wisp attack. It pierces all enemies in that line, doing heavy damage and stunning. Typically, I move in with this move after setting up my kill zone, then finish off what's left with bites. It recharges quickly, so use it as often as you can. Now, I keep mentioning these kill zones, right? Well, this is how you make them. Third in Acrid's roster is Caustic Sludge. Acrid gets a small speed boost when using it or walking over it, and it leaves a trail of waste in its wake. This sludge lingers on the ground and damages any enemies that come into contact with it. Lighter enemies typically get stunlocked on the end, but even heavier enemies will get slowed down, punching them all up for our last ability. And for our last ability, Akrid releases Epidemic. You fire a large projectile that moves through walls until it hits an enemy. Not only does it deal yet another source of rather nasty damage over time to an enemy, but every second it will spread to an additional two enemies, then again from each of them, then again, and again and again. Using these in conjunction, Acrid thrives by running through or away from large groups of enemies using Caustic Sludge, 
trapping them together and then turning around to hit them all with Epidemic to create a kill zone. By being near each other, the enemies are basically killing themselves, weakening the horde to give you the perfect opening to move in with piercing shots of bile and gnashing of teeth. Acrid's alts are a interesting bunch, and can be a little bit of a pain to get since if you try through Providence Trials, you'll need to have unlocked a few other characters to get to them. But here's the rundown. Acrid has alts for his first, second, and third ability. Alt 1 is acquired by killing Acrid as Acrid. Go back to Sunken Tomb and take out your inferior clone in less than 15 seconds, and the alt is yours. Alt 2 is done through a Providence Trial that involves using the ability to scale through a rising and rapidly flooding level or just collecting 300 items. And Alt 3 is locked behind another Providence Trial that I don't have access to yet, so I had to use the alternate method of killing 3,000 enemies. They aren't necessarily difficult, but if you don't have access to the trials, going through the process of collecting that many items or killing that many enemies can be a bit tedious, but just try to think of it as time to learn the character, that way you're prepared when you have the ults. Now then, Alt 1 turns Festering Wounds into Corrosive Wounds. You lose some of the damage per strike and the poison over time, however, each hit applies a stacking debuff that leaves the target vulnerable to all other damage, including that of your other attacks. These stacks seem to take a good while to decay as well, so it can lead to some pretty lethal combos. Alt 2 turns Neurotoxin into Toxic Bubble. Instead of a single high damage piercing line, Acrid belches up a bubble that lingers out in front of him for 5 seconds. It does light damage over to any enemy touching it until after those 5 seconds it explodes, doing significantly higher damage than a neurotoxin hit in a small AoE. Additionally, you can move it about by striking it, and you can jump on it like a bouncy platform for yourself. Since Acrid has a glaring lack of mobility options, this can be a handy way to get around if you're lacking a Hopo Feather or two. And for all 3, Caustic Sludge becomes Dissolving Ambush. Instead of leaving a large temporary trail behind you, Acrid spits out a small but permanent puddle that does slightly stronger damage over time to enemies standing in it. At any time in the future, activating the ability a second time will warp you to that puddle, consuming it and putting the ability on its relatively short cooldown. Given that the small speed boost from Caustic is usually Acrid's only movement option, this can be a tough sell, and you've got to be careful when you use it because your next use then has to be to teleport back to it. But used correctly, this is a good one. It's basically a free version of the Karara Marble, which is a use item that creates a gate you can teleport to later. And you can do things like if you find a chest that you don't have the money for to, plop your puddle down and then teleport back to it later once you've killed some things, or same thing if you find the teleporter. This alt set is really interesting, as it effectively reverses your normal order of operations. When using full alt, you'll naturally want to lead with your bite to stack the debuff, then drop Epidemic bubble and your puddle either to hold up the enemies from getting to you, or you could shoot the puddle away prior to your attack so that you can bite, warp back to the safety of your puddle, and fire epidemic at the now vulnerable crowd. And that's not even getting into the various combinations between sets. Personally, I run corrosive wounds and then everything else is default since I sometimes struggle to land the explosion of bubble, and I prefer to blanket a larger area with sludge. This lets me keep my normal order of operations of Sludge, turn around for Epidemic, and then finish them off with Toxin and Teeth. But I can specifically target stronger enemies with my new Corrosive Strikes to make sure they go down with the Horde. It's that nice small tweak that works well with my style of play and complements it to fix the one issue I sometimes have, that being tankier enemies who don't go down with the Horde. And I think anyone else who plays Acrid will also be able to find a similar tweak that complements their personal preference. Let me know what loadout you use in the comments below and why you like it, and we can use those to help new players see a variety of ways to play our favorite best boy. And that's about it. Really quick though, this was mentioned in the comments last time. I have completed my transformation into Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> uh, in all seriousness though, thank you guys. Uh, I expected and was hoping that the last video would do really well. I could not have predicted how well it did so suddenly. So y'all are fantastic. Thank you for that. That being said, I am planning on filling this guide series with every character from Risk of Rain Returns. I will be covering them all. That being said, I have a couple requests, about three or four characters who have been moved up the list because people like you asked for them. Everything else is kind of in a, just a no real order right now. So if there's a character you want to see next, the next ones I'm prioritizing are like, 
mercenary, commando, and minor, not necessarily in that order. So if you have a character you want to see done, I think Sniper is also one that got requested a good bit. By all means, please drop your suggestions below. I will move them up the priority list a little. Uh, aside from that, the only real thing was I did want to let some of the new people know. I'm getting a lot of new faces in here. This is not, nor has it ever been, nor will it ever be an exclusively Risk of Rain channel. Uh, I love Risk of Rain. Amazing game. I don't like fitting into just one niche like that. I can't sustain it forever. I do all kinds of different things, both on this channel and on Twitch. I think you will enjoy all of it. So links are down below. Videos are on this page. Y'all know where the stuff is. You've used the Internet before. I implore you to check it out. And I hope to see you all again very soon. Take it easy.